Well, everyone, this is Ricky with another Bible lesson, I'm, and I thank you for listening to the ones previous. Um, and I said last week that I think there's about a week ago or so, about three or four new believers or new persons has started watching the video. So we thank you for that. Whoever you may be, whatever you may do, be in your life, thank you for listening to the Word of God. That's the most important thing. It's the Word of God applied to our lives and what it says. Okay, so it's February the 26th, 2024, on a Monday morning. And I want to bring a message today on the, on the subject of this right here. Why do so many people say they believe in God or in Christ or both, but there's very few or very little evidence, okay? Why does that happen throughout our community, our churches in the United States, and maybe even in, in the world? Although it's probably, I'm focusing more on the United States. Okay, so let's start a new Bible uh, memory verse. Last four weeks, we we, we done Ephesians 1, 7, okay? In whom we have redemption through his blood, uh, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, Ephesians 1, 7. We've done that for four weeks, so I hope you memorize that. If you don't get a chance, go back and listen to the ones uh, four weeks earlier, and you can memorize those verses with us. But let's do, let's do a new one this morning. It's going to be Philippians 4, 13. Now, this is from the lesson that I've done two weeks ago when we outlined the book of Philippians. Philippians 1, 21, Philippians 2, 5, Philippians uh, 3, verses 13 and 14, and then Philippians 4, 13, that many people know, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. That word through can also be in Christ, okay, which strengtheneth me. Okay, that can be uh, translated in other places. Matter of fact, I, look up, I looked up how many times it's in Christ. I believe it was 78 times in the New Testament the word in Christ comes available, okay, in our King James Bible that we use. Okay, so I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Okay, let's do that one. That's the memory verse for the next three, four weeks, probably about four weeks like we usually do. And then we'll go to another um, another Bible verse. And then we'll get right into the lesson. So let's do this together, okay? Philippians 4.13, okay? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Philippians 4.13, okay? All right, you want to digest that a moment? Let's do it again together, okay? Here we go. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Okay, he does the strengthening, and it's in Christ that we do these things, not outside the will of Christ. Okay, so that's Philippians 4.13. So let's get into our Bible lesson today. Now, here, here's, let me give you a little heads up. I have spoken to many people. I get the opportunity to speak to a lot of people on a weekly basis. And uh, for years now, I've been able to do this, and actually throughout my Christian life, but... Um, uh, here recently in the last few years, it seems like the Lord has just really opened the door. So I am so glad. Now, here's what I'm finding and how found, and it's concerned me, and I've done similar lessons on this, but I'm going to be more direct in, in something in this lesson today. So let's get into it. Okay, here we go. I asked people, said, do you do you believe or, or something of the nature? Do you? I usually don't ask them, do they, are they saved? Because in their mind, they're already saved, or, or they hope to be saved, so they just answer, yes, I'm saved, I'm okay, and then where do you go? So I always ask the question in a different way. Here lately, I've been asking people, I says, let me ask you a question, if you don't mind, and they're, they're, I always make sure that they are open-minded, and they'll say, yeah, sure, and I say, well, where, where were you, or do you know, where are you going to spend eternity? So I'm not asking them what they think. Well, I'm asking what they think, but I'm not asking them what they, they, they are using to get to heaven. Well, I hope I get to heaven. I think I'm getting to heaven. No, it's when or where do you spend eternity? Or I ask them a question that they're not much interested in. You can tell. And I said, well, look, I said, let me ask you this one question. And then if you didn't, can, can answer this and you're satisfied, then I'd say, you know, uh, you've already made up your mind. But if you don't know this question then you need to ask yourself this question. Here's the question. Why, not when, and not how, but why does a person have to die? Why does a person have to die? And most of the people, I've done this for years and years. I always start out with the law, as you know, in my other lessons. I teach the law first, the penalty of sin, and that's what this lesson's about. So here we go. A lot of people say, well, I don't know. Most people say, I never thought about that, never heard that. But then you get some of them, just a few of them, say, oh, uh, you know, sin. 
but it's in the sense of, well, you know, Adam ate the fruit, and boy, we, we, we messed up. Well, we, he did mess up, but you can tell it's on the surface of their knowledge. It's not that they have thought about it and acknowledged their sin. So a lot of people are saved or think they're saved when they're not even saved. Now, I don't want to get into the, this and that and whether or not a person can stray away from the Lord. We're going to talk about the essence. We're going to talk about the, the, the requirement to be saved. Now, whether you think that Elijah and, and Enoch's coming back into tribulation, the seven years of tribulation, we call that. If you think they're the ones that's going to come back to be the two witnesses, that's fine. If you think Moses, there's Elijah, Enoch, and Moses. Now, whichever one you think, you can bind them up and you think all three of them's coming back. That has nothing to do with your salvation and you being saved from your sins, okay? has nothing to do with it. You can believe wrong about that and be right about salvation, or you can be wrong about both of them. So essential, what is it that God's going to say to you on judgment day, are you saved, enter into the kingdom, or depart from me, you workers of iniquity? Now, I know I took a little bit longer time in the introduction this time, but please stay with me. I want to quote a verse from 2 Timothy 2.7. Now, Paul is speaking here. God called Paul to be an apostle. He wrote most of the New Testament, and he wrote under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. He said, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctor reproof and correction and in righteousness and instruction. But here's what he said. He said, consider what I say, 2 Timothy 2.7, consider what I say and the Lord, Here's the key. And the Lord will give the understanding in all things. Okay? He will give the understanding. Paul was just a vessel. Paul was the, the voice like John the Baptist. John said to Baptist, said, he said, I am a voice speaking in the wilderness. The Word of God makes straight the ways, the paths of the Lord. So Paul is speaking, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, this is from God if you will listen. Now listen with your head. No, no, no. Let's listen with our heart. Let's listen with our heart. Now, I'm going to read the text verse. I always give you a text verse at the beginning. Here's the key text verse, and we're going to give some examples and word around this. Okay, here we go. John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40. Jesus is speaking to a crowd today, okay, in that day when he spoke. He was speaking to the crowd and speaking to us and Christianity as a whole in these verses, two verses. He says, search the scriptures, search the Bible, for in them... Ye think ye have eternal life. Ye think you have eternal life. He's talking to the scribes, the Pharisees, the priests that did not believe. They, they believed in religion. They believed in rituals. They believed in their certain things that they had. You better not, you better not pick up a grain of sand on Sunday. That's plowing and you're in sea. They believed, but they didn't believe the scriptures here. And that's what I want to refer to today. Please listen to this message. Please open your heart. So consider he says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. For are they, that's the scriptures, are they which testify of me. The scriptures is Jesus Christ himself. He came and fulfilled the scriptures. Old Testament, all the prophets of the Old Testament, all the times that he would be born, the place he would be born, the name of Christ, he fulfilled the law, the Ten Commandments, everything perfect. He never sinned, okay? So he said, in me. The scriptures testify. In other words, I am the object of what you believe. Believe here only? No, you got to have knowledge, but to believe here. Now, when I witness to people, when I talk to people, they can tell me they know the plan of salvation. We're going to get to that in just a moment. They, they can know the plan of salvation. They said, yes, Jesus Christ, God's Son, many of them. Not everyone, but most of the people say, yes, I know Jesus. He died on the cross. He, he was buried. Now, they may not say it in that order. But they're saying, yeah, I believe that. And you say, well, you know, did he resurrect? Yes, yes, yes. They know all about that. They can tell you the Romans wrote. They don't need a preacher. They can get up if they, if they were asked to and say, what is the plan of salvation? Here's number one. Here is the point number one. You're not saved by the plan of salvation. You're saved by the person of salvation. Not by the plan of salvation, but by the person of salvation. Now, People will tell you, yes, I believe in God. Now, James says, if you believe, that faith that you believe in God in here is going to produce works. So many people 
they'll they'll acknowledge God if they're if they're confronted, not confronted, but casually, you know, with the Lord's good. Yeah, the Lord, boy, He sure is good. He does. very seldom do you see people that have a a spirit of life in them that testifies to Christ. So they're out there, far and few in between, but they're there. But here's what I want you to see. We're not saved by the plan of salvation, but by the person of salvation. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an illustration of something. I was talking to a person one time, and he had a serious disease. Okay? And he, he, he it looked like he was, he was his, his last days was, was upon him. And so I went with him, and I spoke to him, and I come from the law first, and he kind of nodded his head and just kind of listened to me and didn't say a whole lot. He didn't feel that well. I understand that part. And so um, I said, now, before you can trust Christ or believe and trust Him, you must acknowledge what sin is. You must not know it of just here only. But you must, just the Holy Spirit must speak to you. The Holy Spirit will reveal what true sin is. And He gave me a piece of paper with the Romans wrote on it. He said, well, do you believe this? Like, well, I, I'm sure you do, but this is, He was saying, this is what I, I, I have. This is what I see. This is what I hear. Now, if honestly, if he would have seen that from the Holy Spirit drawing him and, and his heart and mind open, then then that's fine. And, and many people have been saved by the Romans road. Please don't misunderstand me. But when we read, let me read to you the plan of salvation in Romans. The, the, the Romans road, we call it. Here we go. Here we go. Romans 3.23 for the wages of sin is death. Have you ever seen it? People say, yeah, 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 this will be the parents, done, you know. Okay, let's go to the next one. Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love, which he did, towards us, that is sinners. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. They will acknowledge that. Then move on to the next one. Well, the wages of sin is death. Most people never understand, and I've asked this to hundreds and hundreds of questions, and even people, a lot of them say, I'm saved. I said, well, let me ask you, have you got to the place to where you taught on this subject, or you... I was just talking to a person, a young person, and they said, you know, everything I know, my, my, my daddy taught it to me. She was sincere. Now, she, it, was a, it was a she, and she was sincere. She said, not only have I believed it, I've experienced it, and I believe that. I believe that. And I said, well, have you, have you got a chance to get around to the subject? I know it's not a good subject, but why does a person have to die? She, blank, blank expression on her face. She said, I, I never thought about that. Uh, no, no, I don't know why that. And I said, well, and I'm thinking, well, now, if you don't know the wages of sin is death, and that we're spiritually separated from God, no relationship when we was born from Adam, because everyone in Adam is a sinner, and we're separated from God by sin. Sin separates. That's what sin is. Sin is the separation of a person in a right relationship with God. The wages of sin is, is death. Separation. When we were born, we knew of God because we have a revelation. We know of God because we have a conscience that God put there. And we have a knowledge of, of, the, of the things around us. The creation itself testifies there's a God. But that doesn't mean you have a relationship with God until you come through Christ here and not here only. I hope this is making sense to you. I know this is, please stay with me on this subject, okay? Because it's so important, okay? So they, they go to Romans 10, 13, and they say, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, if they call from that heart, and they call with a repentant heart, and, a, and the Holy Spirit is drawing them. The Holy Spirit is, is convicted them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And this is John chapter 16, verse 9 through 11. When he is come, the Holy Spirit, he will convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And in the book of Acts, Paul said the judgment to come. So a person has to see themselves lost and undone in their sin. Paul said this right here in, I believe it's Romans 7. I'll have the verses on the screen for you. He said, I've not known sin, but by the law. Now, if you tell a person, hey, have you ever sinned? They're like, well, you know, I'm a pretty good person, but yeah, I'll, I'll sin. They got a nonchalant. Most of them do. Now, if you find a, a believer that's saved, and, and they know that they were washed from their sins by the blood of Christ in Christ, they will acknowledge it a different way. They, they may not go in in the order that I'm going into it right now. They may say it a roundabout way. They may, but they understand that they saw themselves a sinner. Have you ever been convicted of sin, of the Holy Ghost of God, of sin in your life, in your soul? I'm thinking of, of Ezekiel 18, verse 4. The, the, the soul that sinned, it shall die. And when Adam sinned, the whole race, everyone was plunged into sin. And you cannot know what true sin is 
until somebody reveals and opens up sin. Now, I can do that with the Ten Commandments, and that's what I do. One lie of send your soul to hell. One disobedient of your parents, you are a disobedient child. Now, let's, let's go down through the list here. One covetous. You ever coveted somebody's look, somebody's body? Then you covenant, you desired something that does not belong to you. You're willing to steal it. If you could, you would. Have you ever lusted upon the opposite sex? Don't tell me a lie now. You, 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 have, you have, if you are the teenage age or older, you have done that. And you say, well, that's normal. That's just normal life. That's just the hormone. It's still sin. Have you ever had hatred in your heart? Dislike someone. You disliked them because they were prettier than you. They, you disliked them because they were the ones that was always the crowd pleaser in the schools and in your gym lockers or whatever it may be in the school, in the ball playing. You wished it and you, you, you desired to something that's hatred. And God said in verse John chapter 3 and verse 15, He that hateth his brother or sister, anyone, is a murderer. And we know that no murderer have eternal life abiding within him. I'm asking you the question, have you ever... Have you ever been convicted of sin and judgment and judgment to come? Have you ever seen yourself lost and headed to a place called hell? Oh, you may not understand everything about it, but there was something right there in there saying, don't do it. When you was 10 or 11 years of age, you look around making sure nobody wasn't watching you. If you're of age of 50 or 60, it may have been that you went down to the creek or you went down behind the barn or you went and looked at something other you shouldn't have looked at. And if you're a young person today, that phone, that phone gives you access to every sin that you want and more. Now, you have looked at things. You have, in, in that 11, 12, maybe 13 years of age, you just looking around making sure nobody wasn't watching you and there was something saying to you, don't do that. I've asked hundreds and hundreds of people, do you remember that time? Do you remember when something was saying, don't do it? And that was the Holy Spirit of God. That was God Almighty telling you, don't do what Adam done. Don't choose to choose to sin. And you did it anyway. And therefore, you're a sinner by nature from Adam. Now you're a sinner by choice. And that's when you become accountable to your sins. And the, and the second death is now upon you because you have rejected to accept God's Son, God's salvation. And the second death is come to you now. So you're not only facing physical death at, dark, at, at one day, you will face eternal death. You will face the second death in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. Read it for yourself. It's there. Now you're facing two deaths. A child, a, a baby, or a child, or a small person, or a young person is not accountable but for the death. They will physically die the first death, but they will never face that second death. No children, no babies ever will have to face that second death, but because of Adam's sin, they're going to have to face that first physical death. But have you ever been convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment? I, I, I repeat this in Acts 24 and 26. Felix trembled when Paul spoke to him. King Agrippa, he said, almost, he said, almost, Paul, almost thou persuadest me. Almost you, 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 you hit me where it hurts to be a Christian. But he rejected it. He did acknowledge the sin and say, God, I'm a sinner, and I, I accept thy son, the Lord Jesus. So you're not saved by the plan of salvation, but by the person of salvation because he died on the cross for your sins. He was buried for your sin. God punished his son on that cross in your place. And now the question becomes, because there's an out, there's a way to escape the judgment of the second death, not the first death. We will face the first physical death unless the Lord comes back as, as Christians and raise them and we'll be translated. But people will face the first physical death. But now watch this. The second death, is not going to hurt a Christian because he's trusting what Christ did. He is allowing Christ to come in and he's believing here, but he's also accepting here that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he rose again. Now, does he understand or she understand everything about the resurrection at the beginning, at the not at the at the time when she accepts Christ or he not necessarily, but they believe it. There's the key. God didn't ask us to work for it. He asked us to believe that His Son did the work. And he redeems us through the blood of the Son. And we accept him here. And so we're saved by the man of salvation. The salvation is Jesus Christ died. He was buried, rose again the third day. He seated at the right hand. And Jesus said, he that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. So you're saved by the man of salvation and not by the plan of salvation. So many people, churches, I know churches. I've seen it. I've heard it. The vacation Bible schools, the revivals, just say this prayer. Now, if their heart has already been convicted by the Holy Spirit of God that they're a sinner and they're lost and they understand that Jesus died on them, they get saved. But many of them are not at the place to where the law has been shown to them. 
Therefore, the Holy Spirit of God is still working on them to show them, to prepare them. Jesus said this right here. In Luke chapter 3 and verse 3 and 5, he said, unless you repent, you shall likewise perish. Now, John chapter 6 and verse 44, Jesus said this right here. No man come to the Father except the Father draw him. That's the sinner. How does he draw? By the word of God, which is the law of God, which Jesus fulfilled the law, and you put your trust in a person and not what you or I think salvation is. A lot of people say, oh, I believe in Jesus. Boy, I'm, I'm saved. But their lifestyle. Now, I'm not saying that a, if a young Christian, if a person does get saved, doesn't get in a good Bible-believing church, he may, she may go three or four years before, but they ought to be some reading of their self. Yes, go to church. Yes, at first you have to kind of be guided along the lines of understanding the Word of God from a preacher or a teacher or someone that's led you to Christ to understand what happened to you. I'm not, but, 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 but you need to be growing yourself. You need to be saying, I accepted the Lord. This is the date that I trusted Christ, that I put my faith in Christ Jesus and not about Him. So many people know about Him, but they don't know Him in their heart. Now, I'm going to read to you from Matthew chapter 7. I have read from this, these scriptures before in other Bible lessons. I'm going to read to you again from them. And we're going to wind this down in, in just, a, just a bit here. I wanted to get on my second point, and maybe I'll do that next week. On, you're not saved by following Jesus. You're saved by trusting Jesus. So many people say, well, if you'll just do what Christianity says, you'll be okay. That's, again, you're trusting what you're doing and you're following and you're doing yourself instead of trusting the one that saved you. And that's another lesson. We're going to hold that for another lesson. But here is Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Now, I want you to notice. It said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. So we're not talking about people that are lost at this. At, Jesus is not talking about to the what we would call or what they would call themselves atheists. Now, at one time they believed, but they chose not to believe. We're not talking about someone that's an as, um, what's the word? It's not. I um, can't get it out. Um, agnostic. Yes, got the word out. Got it out. Got it out. We're not talking about. We're not talking about the crowd that don't go to church. Never darken a door. We're mainly talking about people that are religious. They would say, I'm religious. I, or we would categorize them in the religious realms. Lord, Lord, shall... <clears throat> Let me read it again. Let me start over. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So not everyone's going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But remember, this is the religious crowd. Now, he goes on to say... But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many in that day, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, here it is. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Oh, we've been following you. We've been, we've been telling people that Jesus is good. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. And he is good. <clears throat> and in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Here it is. They have a head knowledge. They know of him. They know about him. They go to church pretty, you know, here and there. A lot of them go faithfully. Man, they hadn't. I had one man. He said, "I got a 17-year-old year pen pinned to me because I went to church, never missed a service for 17 years." Now he was an older person, and at that particular time, he didn't go nowhere. Well, I guess he did. He lose all that reward, but but he he he's he's dependent on that. No, no. Jesus will say unto them, verse 23. Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. That is the worst words. That is the harshest payment, judgment, the harshest words that a person will hear. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Well, those verses above said they've done wonderful works. They did the wonderful works. They done the prophesying. They done it all up here. They knew of him. They knew about him. But they did not receive him, the person of salvation. They taught the Bible. They read the Bible. They prayed to the Bible. They prayed in accordance with the Bible, but they never received Him here. I never knew you. You say, "Well, Ricky, what about that crowd? What about those?" And I know that I have received Him. Then I'm going to quote from you from John chapter ten, verse twenty-seven through thirty. Jesus said, "My sheep." He refers to believers. Those that are saved is my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. That's when you got saved, and they follow me because you're saved. You're going to follow. And that's what follows when you get saved. You will follow him because you hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, 
and they follow me, and I, that's Jesus, give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. So he will never say to a true believer that's trusting Christ in here, depart from me. He says, I'll give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which is greater than all, my Father, which is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And then he says in verse 30, I and my Father are one. I left that part of the verse in verse 30, but you can read it for yourself. I and my Father are one. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, those that are saved, truly born again, or you're sealed to the day of redemption, sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. You're in the Son's hand, you're in the Father's hand, and you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity, and you're saved for eternity. You say, Ricky, what do I do if I realize that I know about God, I know of God, but there's no peace, there's something in here, and it's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. What do I do? You say, God, I, I believe, and I know I've all about it up here, God, but now I'm going to trust. And you say, God, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I'm a lost sinner. But I believe, just like Abraham believed, God counted to him for righteousness. That thief on the cross, he said, Lord, remember me. Lydia, the Lord opened Lydia's heart. I wanted to read that verse, but we didn't have time. Acts 16, 14, the Lord opened Lydia's heart for her to believe. If the Holy Spirit of God, if there's something tugging at your heart, and He's saying to you, number one, is saying you're a sinner. Now, if you've already seen that, and you're willing to repent, you're willing to trust Him, He's already went to the second part and said, you need to trust my son. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. What do I do, Ricky? God, I'm a sinner. God, I have sinned. I have lost. I need forgiveness in here, in my soul. And I believe, God, I believe you sent Jesus. I believe that. Tell God, say, God, I believe that. I know. And you say at the same time, faith towards our Lord Jesus. Jesus, you died. You're God's son. You died for me. And I believe and I ask you to come in. I ask you to come in right now and save me from a place called hell. Save me, Lord Jesus, for I believe in here, in the heart. And you will be saved. You don't have to worry about, well, did I say the right words? Because the heart speaks it all. If you had to say the right words, you might not get the right words. But when the heart, it'll speak for you. It'll tell him. It'll tell him all that he, it'll, it'll reveal all, yes, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Yes, Lord, I, I've accepted. Yes, Lord, I, I receive. Because the heart speaks. And the Holy Spirit of God listens when that heart speaks. He'll save you. For you, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call from that heart upon the name of the Lord Jesus that died for you shall be saved. You will be saved. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Now, it's a little bit longer than what I wanted to. I've been trying to keep it under 30 minutes, and this time it's going to go over a little bit of 30 minutes, but I think you've seen the importance of it. So please listen, and please share with someone. Now, I know you know someone that might think they're saved, not quite sure. Share this message with them. Please, in Jesus Christ's name, do it. Do it even now. Right now, just get on your phone. Get on your notepad and say, I'm going to send so-and-so, whoever it is, their name, cousin, uncle, mama, dad, whoever, friend. I'm going to send this message to them right now. Go ahead and do that right now. As we, a little, little bit of music here. All right, thank you much.